Flying high in World War II, Korean zombies, and Indiana Jones, but good? I'm Israel Wright from the PCFM Podcast, and this is your first formation for the week of January 22nd. Coming up first, coming to Apple TV, January 26th, it's Masters of the Air. You might be the last pretty face I ever see. What's the move? We lead our boys through it. All right, the dynamic duo is back, folks. It's Steven Spielberg and Tom Hanks. They brought us... Saving Private Ryan, Band of Brothers, they brought us the Pacific. Uh, they are unstoppable and they really love World War II apparently, which is kind of weird, it's kind of a weird. Uh, but I'm really excited for this. Masters of the Air coming to Apple TV. If you don't have Apple TV, uh, I'm really sorry. It's got the guy who's playing Fayette Harkonnen from the new Dune. <laughs> it looks like a lot of fun. They're bomber pilots. It's World War II. You got the Tuskegee Airmen in there as well. And I'm just, I'm a believer. Like you put Steven Spielberg, Tom Hanks, and World War II in the same room together and magic will happen. Uh, so I'm really excited for this one. The writers look great. The directors look great. And uh, and yeah, <laughs> I'm sure Cameron is gonna, I, if Cameron watches this before I do, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to eat, uh, eat a, Eat a, eat a cow chip or something because I'm really excited for this. He's not going to get there before me. In fact, maybe we can do a special episode of the Pop Culture Field Manual podcast for Masters of the Air once all the episodes are out. It's a nine part series. Uh, yeah, it looks amazing. Uh, it's got a great cast, great writers, great directors. Steven and Tom, Steven Tommy Boy, Stevie. You know, I almost met Steven Spielberg once, actually. Yes, it was uh, E3. I forget it was like 2013, 2014 or something. It was back when it was uh, uh, it's still around, <laughs> and it was industry only. So I, I got my buddy's pass, uh, and he was working for me. <laughs> it was a company at the time, and uh, I remember walking through, and Steven Spielberg came out of something. I forget what it was. I know that he has kind of dabbled in the video game world. Uh, I don't know if he's actually ever actually produced stuff, but he was kind of almost doing things. But he was walking by me, and I almost said hi to him, but I just thought like. I don't know, Steven Spielberg, he probably gets it all the time. And I have this thing about celebrities in public spaces. And the context matters, right? Because if they're sitting down to eat, you just, you don't talk to them. Or if they look like they're on their way to some place, like Martin Freeman, I saw him at Comic-Con once, and he, he was like, dark glasses, headphones in, hat, head down, heading someplace else. And I kind of, he saw that I saw him and I just wanted to, I just waved to him and he kind of like nodded and kind of, he's like, please don't. It was like when The Hobbit was first getting ready to come out. And he's like, please don't tell anybody. That's that look that don't tell anybody I'm here. So I let him go by. I, I, I my, my saying is you got to keep it classy. You got to keep it classy. And uh, I don't know. I just, I got nervous too. I'm like, oh my God, what do I say? You know, but then he, he walked by me. And so that's the story of me not meeting Steven Spielberg. So Masters of the Air coming out on Apple TV. If you don't have Apple TV, Suck it. Up next, we have Badland Hunters coming to Netflix January 26th. <laughs> I love a good action film, and this looks like a fun one. It's got all the great elements. It's got his his name is Ma Dong Sok. He was in Train to Busan. He was the big. He's a big burly dude. Okay, he's kind of like a he's kind of like a Vin Diesel, like a Korean Vin Diesel. Like like if Vin Diesel was like if Vin Diesel was Korean. And in Vin Diesel could speak Korean and he looked like Ma Dong Sok. If they were if they were pretty much the same guy, they he could be like Vin Diesel could be the Korean Ma Dong Sok is what I'm saying. 
But uh, post-apocalypse, there's in, so it's weird. There's a post-apocalyptic era. I think there was a giant earthquake that just leveled all of Korea or maybe just Seoul. But it's all there's also an evil scientist who is making zombie-like people. So we get we get post-apocalyptic, but it wasn't because of zombies. But there are zombies in the post-apocalyptic wasteland, and he's a hunter. I don't know what I don't know what what they hunt, but he is kind of like he's kind of like a cool dude. But they hire him or get him to try to rescue this young lady who's being held captive by this evil scientist. And uh, good action is hard hard to come by. You got to get it where you can uh, where you can find it. Um, and it's hard to innovate. I have been a fan of Korean movies for a long time. When I was taking Korean in the Q course uh, back in the army, uh, a friend of mine, actually, yeah, it was she was the daughter of one of the teachers. Uh, she was visiting from Korea. She gave me a bunch of bootleg Korean movies, and they're really good. Koreans make some good films. Uh, I remember it was Fighter in the Wind, which was based on a true story about the guy who did the the hard body, developed the hard body karate style, hard body hard body uh, uh the hard yeah it's the hard body hardening it says different when you switch the words there's hard body and then body hardening the body hardening style of of, of martial arts and then there's another one called Atahan, i think more of like a superhero kind of uh kind of film and then of course teguki we've talked about it on the podcast korean war film brotherhood of war one of the best i'm well, certainly the best korean war film ever one of my top 10 war films of all time super super good so koreans they uh they, they they got it going on so i'm looking forward to this one badland hunters coming to netflix on friday and we come to it at last folks it's indiana jones and the great circle coming to xbox in 2024 saw a trailer for it had to talk about it throughout history mankind has built sites of great spiritual significance. If you were to draw a line through these ancient sites around the globe, you get a perfectly aligned circle. So I saw the trailer for this and hope sprang eternal from within my bosom and it was very painful. But uh, it's an Indiana Jones property and it actually looks fun it looks good we all remember the dark times the dark times of 2023 uh of indiana jones and the dial of destiny that steaming pile of crapola that's it's it's what it looks like to rape and pillage and murder over and over again the dead corpse that is the intellectual property of indiana jones and uh i got excited for it because i want indiana jones to be good again <laughs> And there's a chance, I think, in this video game. In Indiana Jones is not voiced by Harrison Ford. He's, he's voiced by Troy Baker, who I did meet once. I did meet Troy Baker, and that's actually more than just like, a, like I said hi to him. We were actually both acquaintances of somebody else who invited us to, it was a, uh, it was a radio show kind of style show at Comic-Con in San Diego at the Spreckles Theater and uh, Thrilling Adventure Hour, and what's the other weird one that I don't understand? Oh yeah, uh, Welcome to Night Vale. And we, also, we both happened to get there at the same time, and I said, oh my God, and that day, that day I had missed a panel he was doing for, it was either, um, it was either Shadow of Mordor or Shadow of War, I can't remember which one it was, but I had missed that panel because it, 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 uh, it got too crowded and I couldn't get in. But I was like, oh my God, I wanted to see that panel. He was super, super cool. So now that's a great time to kind of like nerd out because Troy, you're at, you're at Comic-Con, you're out on the town, you might meet some fans in the middle of Comic-Con. So he was super nice, super cool dude. And also we all sat together up in a little balcony seat and watched this uh, kind of crossover show, Thrilling Adventure Hour with Night Welcome to Night Vale. Um, and boy, let me tell you, uh, if you ever want to feel completely lost, Go to a live show that features a podcast that you have never seen or heard before and marvel at how the guy's just talking. The Welcome to Night Vale guy was just talking and people are laughing and like busting a gut and laughing so hard. And I have no idea what anybody's talking about. I've never felt more lost or uh, as much of an outcast as I did that night. So thanks a lot, Troy Baker. No, he's a cool guy. Right, it's great. So, um, yeah, action. It's the same people that did Machine Gun. Uh, sorry, Machine Games, 
Same people that have done the Wolfenstein series. And then Todd Howard, I don't know how much time this guy has on his hands, but he, but he's, he's done Fallout 4, he did Starfield. Uh, uh, but he apparently executive produced this game. Looks like a lot of fun, globe trotting. You got all the great uh, kind of fighting Nazis going around the world, uh, ancient artifacts, mystical, magical stuff. So, and he really does. Troy Baker really does sound like Harrison Ford. Uh, he sounds like Indiana Jones. So I don't, I don't know this guy. He voices every video game character apparently. Him and Nolan North. Those are two guys. If you've played a video game, you've heard their voices. Uh, but uh, really looking forward to. Whenever it comes out this year, Indiana Jones and the Great Circle. You have any idea how old that was? All right, folks, now we're coming to the segment I like to call, I Don't Care. So, Tekken 8, fighting video game, releases on Friday the 26th, and I remember one time in history, it was 1997. This is when Tekken 3 came out. I had a friend, or somebody that I thought was my friend, invite me over to his house for the express reason of fighting, or rather, rather playing the Tekken 3 video game. It had just come out. He's like, you want to come over and play some video games? He said video games. He didn't say Tekken 3. Now, like, if you don't know me, let me just inform you that I'm not good at fighting games. I, it's why I always choose the female characters because at least if I'm going to get my butt kicked, I want something pretty to look at. All right, call me a misogynist if you will. Uh, but we we were there, and I never played Tekken Three. And Tekken Three is not like it's not like other video games. Every video game has every fighting game has its own uh, technique, right? It's not the six buttons. They have different things, different styles, and and uh, he invited me there just to kick my butt on Tekken 3. That was the only reason. I, I, I learned soon after that this guy was not really a friend of mine. He only, he was only around me, he only hung out with me when he thought that he could like do better at things than I, that I could, or like if he had knowledge in like nerdy places that I didn't, he would always talk about the things in you and then I would, I would like talk about stuff and he would not seem to be interested. I had low self-esteem in high school. Um, but like for like, for like an hour and like, this is before I could drive. So I was dropped off there and I couldn't get picked up for, for a couple hours. So I had to endure this. And, uh, like if I'm not a good loser nowadays, like if I get frustrated on video games, when I stream or whatever, you can imagine being a high schooler and getting your butt kicked, losing over and over again in Tekken 3. So, uh, so yeah, yeah. So, well, you know what? Screw Tekken 8. I hate Tekken 8. It's probably gonna suck. So that's it. That's some pop culture I'm excited for this week. Hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you are excited for, what your thoughts were on what we talked about on this episode of The First Formation. I leave you now with a nice little montage of Chewbacca from Star Wars, if it was voiced by Arnold Schwarzenegger. Chewie, is that you? Good times, my friends. We'll see you on the next First Formation.